Hey guys, this video is for page 10 of your interactive notebook about phase changes. A phase change is a physical change in state of matter. And we talked about a few different examples of phase changes in class. The first ones were melting and freezing. And I've grouped these together because they both involve a transition between the solid and liquid states. Melting is a phase transition from solid to liquid. And freezing is a phase transition from a liquid to a solid. Next we have boiling and condensing. Boiling and condensing are both phase transitions between the liquid and gas phases. Boiling is when a liquid transitions to the gas phase. And condensing is whenever a gas uh, cools down to the liquid phase. A little bit different from boiling is evaporation. And students often confuse these two, but evaporation is a different type of phase transition. Evaporation can occur at any temperature, whereas boiling exclusively occurs at the boiling point. And it is a phase transition from the liquid to the gas phase at the surface of the liquid. So whenever we boil a substance, we're adding heat energy into it so that we uh, give the substance enough energy that the particles escape from the liquid phase to the gas phase. But with evaporation, it works a little bit differently. Instead of adding heat energy into the system, we have collisions with the air particles above the liquid that give the liquid molecules enough energy that they can escape to the gaseous phase. And then the last one that we talked about in class was sublimation. And sublimation is a phase transition from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid phase entirely. And this is uh, exactly what dry ice or frozen carbon dioxide does at room temperature. It sublimes. You'll notice it, it goes from the solid phase to the gaseous phase instantly, and it skips the liquid one completely. We can classify phase changes, or really any physical or chemical change, as being an either endothermic or exothermic process. An endothermic process is a process that absorbs heat, and an exothermic process is a process that releases heat. So our endothermic phase changes are going to be those changes in which we have to add energy, such as melting, boiling, subliming, and evaporating. We have to put energy into the system in order for those phase changes to occur. The exothermic processes will be the ones that release energy, like freezing and condensing, because the substance has to release energy in order to cool down to a more organized state of matter. In class, we did a lab called Investigate Phase Change, and in that lab, we looked at the melting of ice followed by the boiling of water, and we did what is called a phase change diagram or a heating curve um, and we also have cooling curves. So this is an example of a heating curve right here. You'll notice that it starts, well first it is plotting temperature of a substance versus time or uh, increasing heat energy. So we start down here with the solid and we can add energy into this system. We add heat energy in over time and the temperature of that solid will increase until it reaches a point that it begins to melt, which in this case would be this temperature right here. And at the point that the solid starts to melt and it begins the space transition, you'll notice that the temperature remains constant, and we saw this in the lab as well. So during the melting process, during that phase transition, the temperature remains constant, and simultaneously the opposite process is also occurring, so freezing is happening at the same time. Now eventually if we continue to put enough energy into the system that all of the solid melts and turns into a liquid, then we can begin heating, well we would still be heating it, but we'll see the temperature begin to increase again now that it's in the liquid phase. And the temperature of that substance will continue to increase until it hits another plateau, and this is because we've reached the boiling point. So at this temperature, the temperature will stop increasing because the substance will start boiling. It'll start another phase transition. And temperature is always constant during a phase transition. And just like the previous phase transition, these processes are happening simultaneously. So while the substance is boiling, some of that newly formed gas will be condensing back down to the liquid. But eventually, if we add enough heat into the system that we completely boil the liquid, it will transition to the gas phase and can be heated again. 
So this is a phase change diagram. We can identify the melting and freezing point on here, as well as the boiling and condensing point. And I'm going to let you all do that on your own. If this were a cooling curve, it would look exactly the same, but it would go in the opposite direction. So we would start up here with the gas, and as we cooled it, instead of heating it, the temperature would drop until it hit the condensing point, and then it would level off until that gas had completely condensed into a liquid, and then it would continue to cool until it hit the freezing point, and then uh, it would undergo the freezing process until it had completely solidified, and then we could cool it down even further than that. So it would look exactly the same, but be in the opposite direction. The last thing that you need for this page is into the left-hand margin to glue the application phase change worksheet that we did in class. There's just three questions on that. And then you'll be done with page 10 of your interactive notebook on phase changes.